Mr. Atkinson is going to talk about raspberry pie. So and I know some of you who are in that elective will have some really good uh, questions. You guys all have a lot of energy. I want to let you know that I think that you guys are right up here. You're the future. But you're also the now. I need to let you know that I'm going to be telling you a lot of ideas and you want to walk through them quite quickly so that we can get the questions. I'm going to stop a few times to ask one or two. I'm going to leave most of the questions to the end. And then if you do have time, I have a few gadgets I'm going to show you. And I may even select one or two of you to help me take apart something. Everybody likes to take things apart, right? So, just pull back a little bit and soak it in because while some of you know about Raspberry Pi, others may not. And we really want to get ideas ideas are great to have. And you may like some of them, and you may not like others. That's okay. Let's take a look and see what Raspberry Pi is all about. This is Raspberry Pi, they sell RPI sometimes, for short, and I just call this 123 because that's what this is. It's the 123 of what it is, what you might could do with it. This is what a Raspberry Pi is. This looks like some piece of electronics. Right? And it's got all kinds of gadgets on there. And we're going to come back and talk about the pieces of it in just a little bit. But why would you want to mess with anything like this? Well, it's really, really cool. So what can you do with it? Well, you could make an arcade video table. It's got your coffee table. So you got your coffee here, controls here, you got a retro game. You could make that with the raspberry coffee. Or you could make a traditional table for your basic. And the controllers on each end play. <clears throat> you, this image didn't come out too well, but you've probably seen Super Nintendo sort of antiquated, you know, probably out before. You guys are around, but it's a lot of fun. And they've got all the different games that you can play on on um, on this. If you go back, some of the games from the 70s, 80s, and 90s from Sony PlayStation, you can actually put on this little device. And you can have your own screen and everything and play those kind of games. So a lot of fun. Here's a guy called the Retro Pi Project, where he actually helps you turn a Raspberry Pi into these retro games. And you can see this guy here has actually built an old style of video games you might find in a store or a restaurant somewhere. Here you got someone playing one with a controller. You got Pac-Man. And uh, a lot of people here. Helping you out. Or maybe what you really want is to say, you know, I like games, but I want to build my own gadget. I don't want to buy one. I want to build one. I want to build your own cell phone or your own tablet. You can build a Raspberry Pi tablet. <clears throat> Perhaps you want an old, old style <clears throat> laptop, which used to come with a briefcase. And here you go. There's your briefcase style laptop. So cool. No, I want my Raspberry Pi to do something, you say. I want it to just not just be fun, I want it to actually do something. Well, not only could you use it in a coffee maker to turn on the coffee, but you might be even program it what kind of coffee. And to make sure it goes off, so if you leave the house, it's not plugged up. The power is off. Maybe you have pets at home. You're on vacation, and who's going to take care of them? Well, maybe they take care of themselves, but someone still needs to feed them. Well, program the pet feeder at the right time will open up and give your pet just the right amount of food. And if there's still food in the bowl, it only it won't overfill it. It'll give you just the right amount. It'll also give them some water. There's various different kinds of things. I think this is either for a gerbil or for a cat. So you can see the Raspberry Pi and another type of controller there. I don't have a cat. I don't have a dog. I have fish. 
And what's so cool about fish is, is that you can actually change the color of the water, the lights, change the temperature of the water, make sure it's warm enough for those fish that are tropical. Not too cold. You can even set up wave action if you have a motor in there so that you get like an ocean spray in the surf. So you can do all that with a raspberry pie. Maybe you have an aquarium. And inside the aquarium, you have insects with small beasts, you know, like lizards or frogs or whatnot. And what you need, though, is you need the rainforest. What happens to the rainforest? Mists, rains, and cool winds, and kind of cool heat. You need to control the temperature and the humidity. You can control those things and the lighting, the reservoir. I want to watch modern style television on this modern style music. Maybe you can play video games on my television, but we don't want to smart TV yet in the bedroom. So what do you want? You say, oh, DVR. That's true. Why don't you just go to your parents and tell them you build the DVR? You don't build it yourself. You have control of it. Use the Raspberry Pi. This is one of the systems that you can build. It has all the features that you have on a regular commercial system. It's all free. You just put the things together. So all the different uh, ways of getting things. You can even see the local news. It's a lot of power in your hands. You say, okay, I want to see some new stuff. All right. We talked about today the internet. Thing. Right. The Internet of Things is when you attach the internet to everything, from your shoelaces to your cat, okay. from your dog to your car, from your doors, to perhaps a ball that you play. You can attach the internet to everything. Maybe you want to attach it to a mirror. I did that. Well, I'm going to be in one. I want to see the weather. I want to see the weather in the mirror while I'm in red. So I can see my schedule and maybe I can see the time and I can see the news right there from the right through it. In the buildings, the Raspberry Pi. Nope, I want a toy. I want a toy. I want a great toy. I want to be able to control it. Yeah, you can buy it. You can make it. You build a little quad car, something's got to control it. There's got to be a brain in it, right? Something's got to tell it how to receive the signal from you to go up, to go over, to make sure that the amount of power to this is the same as this, so it doesn't go sideways, or maybe you want to go sideways, so it doesn't crash. A lot of control there. That control is provided by your program using Raspberry Pi. Sits right up underneath us. Cool. I say, I have a treasure chest. It's got my stuff in it. I don't want my brother or my sister to do it because I'll always do it my stuff. I'm going to have a treasure chest. So when I open it, I know my stuff's there. It's going to recognize who I am. I'm going to look at it and go, My special touch, my special look, is going to open up my treasure chest. When I close it, it's locked. I'm going to keep Maybe some of you are into games, super powerful games. You want to play with your buddies, and you want to have a lot of power. This is a gaming server. You can build that gaming server. Maybe you want a robot, huh? This is a toy. It's cool. It's got a little tractor on it. It's got some. It's got a camera here, so it sees where it's going. You can sit in the other room and drop around the corner and see what's going on. This has got a couple eyeballs on it. Maybe you want something a little more gnarly, huh? You crawl anywhere. I want R2D2. Right? Who doesn't want R2D2? You can 
build hard to do to with the Raspberry Pi. You have to get the other kit part of it. Put the, R, the Raspberry Pi inside that and tell it how to move around, where to go, how to be. Yes. No, I have not. You're going to make all this. <laughs> I'll take one more question. Can the Hercules Not as it's shown here, but if you wanted to build one in the fly, I could talk to you about how you might do that. Okay? So if you were interested in that, we could talk about that. Okay? That's a great idea. Or maybe you just like cool lights. A nice place to study before the wall is boring. I want the wall to change colors because I don't like the same color every day. And I want it to be cool blue or calm green, maybe sometimes hot pink. Raspberry Pi can control the colors. What if you want to take not just pictures of things, but you need pictures of things. So then you can take those pictures and put them into a game and you can turn the thing around. Something. Maybe you could take a 3D really picture of them with tape camera. You can do that with this kind of a gizmo. They have Raspberry Pis all around this thing. It's not a lot of Raspberry Pis. But my point to you guys is this: you can do this. There are already people your age doing this just as well as I would do. My background is physics. Anybody know what physics is? Okay. And, uh, but I've been doing software engineering for a long time. But guess what? I'm finding out that guys your age are being able to work with this little toy. It's really not a toy. It's just a piece of machinery. You've been able to work with this as well or as good as I am. Here is Amy Mathers. She's 14. She went to go to work at Raspberry Pi Foundation for a day. And here she is with Dr. Sam Aaron. And they're using a little uh, software product called Sonic Pi, which is a great tool for the teachers who are listening. It's a great tool to learn Raspberry Pi. Sonic Pi. Down right down here in Charlotte. Right down here in Charlotte. The Latin school has they divide they divide their their students into girls and boys. <coughs> okay. And the girls have a Raspberry Pi class. And they all did a project. Each one of them did a different project. And they got together and they were so good at it that they actually had their own TED Talk. Everybody know what a TED Talk is? Okay. Not probably give the parents and find out what a TED Talk is, and they went and presented. Now this talk is now on the internet and can be seen all over the world, their projects. The little eight-year-old girl got tired of her older 16-year-old sister coming into her room and taking her stuff. So here's what she did. She asked her not to do that didn't work so well. So what she did was is she made a goblin detector. It's really just a detector to see if someone's in the room. And it's got a little sensor right here. It's got a Raspberry Pi and it sends her a little tweet and sets off an alarm when anybody comes into the room. So she knows if someone comes in and it also makes a kind of a noise, a hard little noise that says, yeah, I know you're in the room. Python, that's a good question, Python is a programming language. And uh, if any of you are in the class, they'll explain it's, it's, a, it's a simple programming language. And a lot of programming that's done for these things, it's already been done for you. You have to go out and find the programs and put it on the Raspberry Pi. And sometimes you have to change a few things around. But it's, it's sort of what I would call an intermediate 
on scripting language. So maybe not for you beginners, but definitely is something that you can do. She was eight, so now one guy was really interested in the space program. And he was so interested he wanted to follow the space station, the International Space Station. So you can get on your phone and look to see when it's up in the morning and the evening, you know, right before sunset or, uh, or twilight. You can sometimes see it. Sometimes it's far away, it's 500 miles away. But he wasn't satisfied. He wanted to know where it was all the time. So he created this thing called a mission control. You see, there's his bunk bed, and he has a chair there, and he's got all these widgets and a little touch screen. And he can actually get pictures of what's going on, and he can see where it is, and he can see what they're actually looking at on the earth, all right here from his own mission control. Mission control is cool, but what if you want to be the astronaut? One guy built his own space capsule. It's in his bedroom, but what he did was he could crawl into this thing, and inside he's got a panel of lights. And he can flip switches, and it's got lights and things like this on, and it can actually simulate him being in a space capsule. This guy made a nice car. They said it was going to have a Lego kit, but I only see a few signs of Lego in this in here. Maybe something more advanced than Lego. Someone say what it was? Technics. Technics, okay. I figured it was something a little bit, you know, Lego. I've seen Technics. But this has got a Raspberry Pi in it, and it helps control the car. You can control the speed, the braking, and the turning, and that sort of thing. He can actually program it to go over it once. Here's a pretty cool robot. It's got knives and fine wheels, and it's got a little tractor on it. And it's got a touch screen and readout, and it's even got an eye. So that's pretty cool. You can make your own little butler. <laughs> you can serve drinks. Okay. You can, you can come and get your plate and take it back to the kitchen. Huh? So you say, I'm interested in games. You can play a lot of games on Raspberry Pi. Space Rocks, that's a real simple game. You can even change the program so that it behaves in any way. That's a simple game. Everybody's played Minecraft. Yeah. You can not only put Minecraft on your Raspberry Pi like this. That's what Raspberry Pi, I mean, that's what uh, Minecraft looks like for those of you who haven't seen it. You can build your own world. <coughs> But get this, you can build a Minecraft server and share the experience with your friends. They can all log into your room, Raspberry Pi at home, and play together. Now, you say, I'm into creating things. I want to create artwork, I want to create my own cartoon, I want to be a three dimensional world. There's a little programming language called Alice 3. Uh, the National Science Foundation and other corporations help throw in some money and they all built this little language called Alice 3 Instructional. It allows you to create your own world, literally, and put 3D objects in it and you can move them around and that sort of thing. And the program helps not only create the image, but move things around inside of it so you can create a game out of that. It has great graphics. I don't know how many of you have heard of turtle graphics. But turtle graphics is this little turtle right here, and you can program it on the side, and you can tell it, do these little loopy loops in a certain pattern, and do this for so many times, and then do another little pattern. And it'll create these nice little fractal patterns. You can have fun all day creating all different kinds of uh, patterns with something called tape turtle. And that will fit right in the Raspberry Pi and you can hook it up to your monitor and watch it. So, one of your more popular languages for those who are beginning is a block programming language. You see the little blocks right here? You actually pull them out of a tray and put them up here, and you can change the little numbers and things in here and actually create some program by just moving like blocks around, just like you would like uh, record blocks, or Legos, or uh, uh, Lincoln Logs, it's kind of a block kind of thing, and you don't have to really type a lot of stuff in, you just drag and drop everything into place, and all of them fit together. So if they don't fit, they're not supposed to go together. Yes? That's the first thing I use. 
Okay, first thing is encoding. It's a great starting language. And you can see here where, where this uh, um, youth is putting together a little program. He's got his little sprites right here. He's got a little program going. They showed uh, someone creating 3D card chase. And uh, uh, you can put animated sprites. Everybody knows what a sprite is. It's a cute little picture. And you can pull things from here over to here. And then it'll set up a stage and say run, and it'll actually test your program over here. If it doesn't work, you go back and play with it a little bit. And that's the editor, the block editor for Scratch. And so that's a great way to learn programming. If programming scares you, that's a great way to start off with that. Even if it doesn't scare you, I think it's a pretty cool. cool. Now, I know this is not a picture yet. I wanted to tell you some other things about Raspberry Pi. It's a little technical, but not much. As you buy it, Linux comes on it. That's not Microsoft, it's not Mac, right? That's the real computer system. And there's all different flavors of Linux. And this one is built off of one called Debian, and they call it Raspberry. There's several different editors here. I've listed a few here. Nano, VI, Vmax. There's a whole lot of languages, including that one that you called up called Python. There's some really advanced languages that you might learn later. JavaScript and all these languages right here are sort of like the web languages. And then these are like the little web server programs with some databases. And there's Scratch and there's Terminal. And you'll see these words as part of the programming environment. So, we've told you what you can do with one. So, what is one? Well, there's a picture of a Raspberry Pi. It's the older model, so it doesn't have all the new stuff on it. It's got a little camera board right here. And you can put them in one of these. There's a thousand <coughs> pieces of for a Raspberry Pi. You can build your own. You can come up with music for this case. Now, Again, it's a little more technical. But I'm going to go back. Does anyone know what a USB port is? That's this thing right here, right? And that's a LAN connection. That's an audio connector. That's an HDMI connector. And these things are called general purpose input output pins. So I go back to my list and see I've listed all that stuff there, plus the camera and display interface. There's one little thing I didn't mention can't see it here, but I'm going to show it to you on the other one. There's a little card that the thing has. The Raspberry Pis have to have a hard drive. It's this big. And you can put this in another little piece of plastic that goes into your computer, and you put the programs on there, and then take this out and stick it right here. And you can even copy all the software on here. Now, for those of you who know what a megabyte is, you know, a thousand megabytes is a gigabyte. And this has 16. But I can't even get, I think, a 64 on here. It's a little expensive. But that's a lot of space. This 16 will hold a day's worth of images on here. So that's a lot of space. See here, this is a little camera board. Okay. A little pin on camera there doesn't need a lens. And I can take that, and I can attach it to the Raspberry Pi right there. And then this little guy right here, you can tell me what the thing this is. No, that was a good guess. It's not a flash drive. It's not even, no. It's not a drive. No, anybody else? Okay, you guys have used this before. You have a, you probably have a little system upstairs, you have an Xbox or PS2, or you have an old style PC, and you play a game, and your dad's router is somewhere in the house, and you attach one of these things to the computer, and it allows your computer to talk to the Wi Fi network, right? And that's what this is. It's called a Wi Fi. Except for Wi Fi. And so, um, I've also got this little device here is a humidity and temperature sensor 
And with the right kind of wiring, you can attach that to these general purpose input and output units. And you can read temperature and humidity with this guy. You can also attach LEDs and switches and this sort of thing. And I've got another look at it here. You say, well, I want to display something. I've got a little display right here that'll attach to my Raspberry Pi. And there's a little ribbon for it. And this is a touch screen. So I can program a button on this and then it will cause the Raspberry Pi to do things and then maybe the readout will be different on it. Okay? So a little device like that. And so a lot of times you need something to help you connect all the wires. And most of you may have seen one of these things in here. This is this is a place where you can put wires in, you've got little holes in it that are all connected. And it's called a breadboard. So um, that's as much, but I'll let you stare at that for a second. And there's your Raspberry Pi. So here's the display, here's the camera, there's the computer chip, here's where the power goes, here are the uh, input-output pins, there's, there's four USBs, two here and two here, and then this is the Ethernet connection. And of course, if you have the Wi-Fi plugged in, you may not need the Ethernet connection because it's wireless. And then, uh, I'm not too sure what that guy is. But anyway, this is the basics of, uh, of the Raspberry Pi. And this is the same kind of a picture here with a lot of labels on it. You can see the back side of it. And this right here is where you can plug in that little, you know, I sure showed you that little SD card, which is like a hard drive. It goes in right here. So. I'm going to stop the PowerPoint right there, and I'm going to take on some questions. Before I do, I'll let you know, by the way, I'll show you this. If you're trying to power it, you probably going to power it with a little um, like cell phone charger. That's pretty much what you use. And you don't really charge it, it's just a display of getting power. You can also use a battery. Now, I invented this camera. It has a Raspberry Pi in it. Design the case, and it has a battery in it that'll last 30 hours. See? When I turn it on, it comes on, it tells me how much power is left. But the actual camera's on this side, I didn't cut off the screws yet. There may be a couple of you that I'll allow to come and help me take this thing apart in a few minutes. So, let's start. Push it. Speak up. Where's that thing do? This camera is a portable camera. I can go put it anywhere as long as I've got my wireless internet connection. And it'll take a picture and it'll sit there for 30 hours and I can not only view the image even on my cell phone, but I can record the image as well. So it's a camera. How did you figure out about that? How did I figure out about it? I watched a lot of videos some of them by people your age, but also read a lot. How many years have you been doing Raspberry Pi? I've only been doing Raspberry Pi since April, but last year I started on another board called People Bone Black, which is a similar type board. But for years and years, I have programmed computers. Not just the kinds like the laptop here, but special boards that go into industry use. And those boards have gotten smaller and smaller, and now they've become less expensive. So not only until a few years ago did we have these kind of things. They were, they were bigger and much more expensive, and only large corporations could afford to program them. Yes? Well, that depends upon your project. Some projects are more expensive than others. Where can you learn to build things with the Raspberry Pi? Well, there's a couple places. The internet's a good place. Uh, your teacher's a good start. And of course, we also have the Alamance Makers Guild, and we talk about things like that there, okay? Yes, um, over here. You, yes. Speak up. 
Well, well uh, I do a lot of things for fun, but a lot of the things that I do today, I do for companies. So the camera I'm building, I'm actually doing for a company, and they're paying me. So, so a lot of the products I do, I don't get paid for, they're just for fun. So. There are a few websites that you can buy Raspberry Pi from. Um, Adafruit is one of them, Spark Fun, and if you Google it, you'll probably find half a dozen more. Okay? Stand up so I can hear you. Yes, loud. Yes. Yes. I was wondering if I could have your wallet and sign in with your name for that. I would be happy to give you advice and anything else I may have. Um, you can shut that down if you want. Anything else that I may have time for, okay? But definitely give you advice and some pointers to the good resources, absolutely. Before I take any more questions, let me just tell you a little bit about the costs, okay? The Raspberry Pi costs $35, okay? That's not $350, that's not $3,500, like it probably would have been the same processor, oh, I want to probably say around 10 years ago. It's really dropped, $35. Now, the hard drive, depends upon the size you get, but typically it's about a dollar per gigabyte. So I got that one for about 16 bucks. This little guy right here cost me 25 bucks. So I think you guys can do the math. You have to add it all up. And that's not all the costs. Because if you think about it, if you want to connect it to a camera or a touch screen or a sensor or a motor or something like that, you have to have money for those things too. So it's good to have what we call a sponsor. Okay? Gotta take a few more questions. Yes. Well, I'm <laughs> most have been working on this, this camera. I also made something called an intelligent light source, which basically is a specialized light that allows them. You know, you ever you want to watch CSI? Yes. Alright. What allows those kind of guys to go into a place and turn on a special light and they can see things that your eye can't see. And it helps to see invisible things like fingerprints and all that kind of stuff. So I made one of those things, okay? So uh, those are the things I've mostly worked on. But I got a lot more projects that I haven't been able to finish, like Ben mentioned. I've got one that measures how stretchy a stocking can be. And I've got one that um, I've got a, uh, I guess a, an old screen to a laptop, and I want to connect it to a Raspberry Pi and see if I can get the Raspberry Pi to talk to it. And so I got a little little projects like that. Let's give a round of applause to the chat. The Alamance Makers Guild is a group of talented and creative makers located in Alamance County, North Carolina, and is sponsored in part by Harris Educational, makers of reinventing science kits like Reinventing Edison Build Your Own Light Bulb. Thank you.